Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Full Tank Motorcycle Podcast. This week, we've got some thoughts on the new BMW R1300 GS Adventure with regards to its looks specifically, as well as my favourite new techie feature from that bike. There's an update to the lovable little Honda Grom, and of course, our regular sections of Comment of the Week and Bike of the Week. But before we get on to the first story, mate, I just want to give a massive shout out to this week's podcast sponsor, and that's the highly innovative wallet makers at Exeter. Now, I've been using this great looking Parliament wallet in Napa Black, and personally, I think it's absolutely ideal for bikers because it's nice and slim and easy to carry, and yet you can fit everything inside with up to 12 cards. It's not just a great looking wallet, though, because there are some brilliant features built in, like this trigger down the bottom here that fans out your cards and it's also RFID blocking for that extra peace of mind. On top of that I've also been using their new finder card which basically acts like an air tag with the find my app in iOS but this one is basically the same size as a credit card so you can fit it into any wallet or anything else you want to keep track of for that matter. Now it has audio built in so you can trigger an alert from your phone and you can use the Find My app to locate it if you do happen to leave it behind somewhere. And look, when you're out on the bike and shoving things in your pocket or your bag quite quickly, it can be easy to misplace stuff. And so for me, I just absolutely love having the reassurance of this thing in the back of my wallet. Check out the link down in the description below of this video to find out more. I'd recommend being pretty quick though, as Exeter are currently running their summer sale. For our pod fans specifically, you can use the code FULLTANK and get a whopping 30% off their products. So that's the code FULLTANK, all one word, for 30% off in the Exeter summer sale. So once again, a massive thanks to Exeter for these awesome products and for their support. So first up, mate, I've made a full video about this bike like the R1300 GS Adventure for the main Motobob channel, but I don't think we've really spoken about it. And one of the most, um, let's say, talked about points with regards to this bike has to be the looks. So I wanted to know, what are your first thoughts? Yeah, you sent me a picture of this one. Um, and I think I gave you my response, which I think it was Wow Wow Wee Wah. Because I didn't know whether you <laughs> were sort of saying... Bad, yeah, I, it, you know what? It's ambiguous and I'll leave it at that. It's because I didn't know whether you were sort of like, oh, I really like it or I don't like it. And then I looked at the pictures a little bit deeper and I was like, no, he doesn't like that. He can't like that because that is not <laughs> a pretty bike. It's... <laughs> it's a shame too because actually the the regular sort of BMW um, 1300GS is uh, you know the new updates they've done for it. I actually think were an upgrade. It does look quite nice, and then to have kind of gone back on that and somehow made it worse. Uh, yeah, I'm conflicted. The new 1300GS was quite controversial when they first announced it because I think people thought it looked a little bit soft and less kind of masculine. Let's say. Uh, because they moved away from a lot of like the steel trellis and that sort of blocky mm. aesthetic into something that I think looked a bit more KTM, more dynamic, diagonal, swooping lines. And then it has the cast aluminium subframe to save a bit of weight. So, yeah, I think the hardcore existing GS ownership base maybe found it a little bit of a, I don't know, just a, a big change, let's say. And also... It does look, when you put them side by side, physically smaller than the previous gen 1250. Um, so yeah, it was taking people a little time to get used to, and then they just follow it up. You know, you're thinking 1300 GS Adventure will be the same thing, but with a just a slightly bigger tank. Um, but they've really gone bold with that tank shape. And uh, it's going to be like another round, I think, of GS fans getting used to the looks of something. Yeah. It's quite a big shake-up, isn't it, actually? And it, I just, I don't yeah. necessarily understand. So explain to me then, the extra of sort of weight on the front of it, right? Does it have a functional purpose or is it just aesthetics? It's 30 litres, the tank on the GS Adventure, as opposed to 19 on the standard bike. So if you want to go around the world or you want to do remote riding, or if you're just someone who likes to tour on their GS... Uh, then this is absolutely the one to go for. It does have a little more suspension travel and it sits a bit taller as well, maybe about 20 mil. Um, so maybe you could argue it might be slightly better off-road as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they sell in equal numbers. The 1250GS and GS Adventure are the two best-selling large capacity bikes on the UK market. Mm. Uh, quite often two of the best sellers full stop. 
And uh, so, yeah, I don't know if it's, um, you know, partly it's got that specific purpose of like long distance on a tank and more off-road focus. But I'd imagine a lot of people just buy these for general getting around on the road and they like the image. And of course, yeah. you know, the Tiger 1200 Explorers, they come with a 30 litre tank. The Multistrada V4 Rally, that comes with a 30 litre tank. But this has a far more efficient engine, certainly than the Multistrada. And so in terms of distance between stops, the GS Adventure is unrivaled i can't quite remember yeah. i think it's something like 380 miles or over 600 kilometers something like that so yeah 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 but it does look that the tank i mean <laughs> the first thing i thought was that it was like ai generated when i yeah, first saw yeah, a picture that's what I was you like, said. yeah <laughs> um also i've got you know that cool box that the electric cool box that we had at yeah. abr my camping cool box which i'm a bit i love it I it's massive so right. yeah big blocky thing <laughs> Uh, the tank on this looks like someone's chopped my cool box in half and glued either half to either side of a 1300 GS. Yeah. I mean, you can stick your brewskis in there. So, you know, it's your camping buddy. You know, you turn up, you've got all of your barbecue food with you. You've got all of your alcohol with you. Um, so I think they should have, they've missed the trick there. They should have kept the tank the same capacity and just made that a cool box on the side. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? Um, they did argue in the press release that it's, somewhat practical because it's so flat on the top they've put rubber padding can you see that in the pictures there's like a rubber surface on top of those blocky it, bits on the sides of the tank yeah okay yeah i can see that yeah the black bits yeah they said it's somewhere yeah to mm. balance stuff mm -hmm. or put stuff when you've stopped off so you can put like your coffee on there <laughs> or your keys <laughs> oh my God. Well, it comes with the table so you, <laughs> you can <laughs> yeah, side tables right. yeah yeah lovely so it did make me think, actually, to be fair. Uh, I was curious to get your take on it. I wanted to play a little game of higher or lower because I don't think it's the worst offender, possibly. I mean, in my opinion, but uh, I'll get your opinion as well. So if I send you some photos inbound, yes. we'll start off quite smooth. And I, do you know what? In looking through it, I realized there was a little bit of a theme, which um, I'll start out of the gate, which is that adventure bikes generally, it's a pretty low bar. Um, so for them to make one, <laughs> for them to make one that possibly isn't the best looking adventure bike is, is saying something, but here we go. Right. So first one inbound, your thoughts, is it better or worse? Ah, the Harley Davidson Pan America, formerly, I think clearly <laughs> the, um, the, the sort of, um, what can we say? The gold medal winner of most Marmite adventure motorcycles. <laughs> well, I, I say Marmite because like, I do think some people really like it. I mean, we saw, yeah. I've got to say, one of the things we said when we were at ABR Festival, Adventure Bike Rider Festival, for anyone who doesn't know of it that's listening, uh, is that we saw a surprising number of Pan Americas, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did actually. Surpri and <laughs> I've got to say, I don't know how you feel about it. It's grown on me. Uh, I will say that about it. It's not as ugly as I first thought it was. Agree. Yeah, I think that's probably fair. I don't know. Putting them side by side, it makes the Pan America look quite tasteful and um <laughs> it's just that headlight though on the pan america i'm gonna say what am i saying whether the pan america is better or worse looking than the r1300 gs adventure yeah is that the game that's the game i think when you put them side by side it's arguably better looking <laughs> what do you think yeah i'd say the pan america just edges it for me but that might just be time and it might just be that actually the bmw Maybe. starts to look a bit better after i've seen it for longer or until something else comes out that i hate more <laughs> in terms of looks. all right just looks What's it performs next? fine next on our list then let me send it inbound oh the original multistrada yeah baby e, this is one of those <laughs> there's a lot of bikes from this area of ducati's sort of uh, design language at that time that I think have aged really well. Mm -hmm. This one, it's tough because there are parts of it that I think have still aged well. The tail section looks phenomenal. Steel trellis frame, love that. Even the sort of tank and lower fairing, not that offensive. It's just the upper part of the fairing plunked on top and the relationship between the upper fairing and lower mm. that I think is, and the stance of it that I think is a little bit weird. But I think, oh, I don't know, mate, that's a very tough one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm tabbing between the two. I'm going to say probably the GS is better looking. Yeah. I got uh, for me that's for me it's actually an easier answer than that one yeah I would go GS on this one this is possibly and I'm going to offend some people I'm sure one of the ugliest bikes I actually I've probably played this card a little bit too early because this is one of my least favorite looking bikes ever I'm oh. sure it rides fantastically 
but it's just so discombobulated. Like the head on it just doesn't match the rest of the bike, and then it looks really skinny underneath and stuff. It's just yeah, not my taste. It's funny. Like, do, you, do you agree there are parts of it? It has potential. There are parts yeah, of it that could yes. be good. But then that's the thing. It's kind of like they've got really good design. It's like, it's like one of those drawings, you know, when you fold over a piece of paper. So oh, yeah. What's that one designer was drawing the headlight and then folded it over and then handed it to somebody else who drew the frame section, sort of middle section of it. And then somebody else drew the tail section. They went, oh, yeah. And then pulled it apart and went, oh, my God, what have we made? It kind of looks like that to me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> right. Next on our list... Sending to you now, a little bit different, but what do you think to this one? I will give you, in case you're not familiar, you probably know roughly what it is. Well, it's some sort of KTM Supermoto. Yeah, so it's a 690. Um, I don't know what era, actually, to be fair. This is just a list I found online, so this is one of those ones uh, in that list. So yeah, what, 690. Ugliest bikes? Basically looked up ugly, ugliest bikes, yeah. Um, I'm not sure I agree with the most ugly, but I'll send it to you in a second. We'll move on to that one. So what do you think of the KTM? I think that headlight is terrible, but I can see why they went with it. You know, it's trying to give it a bit of that high front mud guard, but then kind of finesse that idea into something that's a bit more KTM and designed um but it hasn't worked because it stands too proud of the rest of the bodywork i think mm -hmm. um and the exhaust like you know it's always good to try something a bit different but it looks pretty bad as well to me it looks I, like it's broken it's gonna, back a little bit doesn't it for me like it's slumped yeah, in the middle somehow i think that's worse i'm gonna say that's worse than the gs yep Ta good. like my my, te my official technique is having them <laughs> open in two tabs in my browser it's good and then using the keyboard to quickly switch between and yeah. then which one hurts my eyes the most probably that ktm <laughs> out of those two that's fair all right so the bmw is not doing too badly so far right let's move on to what they voted was the ugliest oh that's unfair Ooh, is it unfair <laughs> oh i can't make my mind up on that mate i think that possibly is unfair although there are certain things on that bike so this in case you're not oh. familiar is a well you i'm sure you are but it's a bimota uh, tessie 3D, uh, but this is a cafe racer version of it, so they do make a different version of it. That's the, it's actually the, uh, the fed version that they were saying was the ugliest. What's your opinion? Yeah. Start flipping, start flipping between them. I mean, one of the weird things about the naked cafe racer is just the, the kind of um, lack of forks, I suppose, yeah. or a fork rather, um, because there's sort of a gap at the front wheel, which I think it makes me a little bit uncomfortable and <laughs> the fed version kind of fills that in a little bit with the fairings so yes it's less yeah. unconventional um but the cafe racer i'd say it's i'd say it's better looking than the gs okay. it just takes a little while to stop looking at but i don't mind that i actually like that that cafe racer version and i think that i agree it's harsh yeah especially is that all of the list that's no no i just picked the there was a little bit more to the list but these are the uh the ones like you say some of them were not so sort of ugly they were kind of mild so i thought i'd go with the most extreme versions but i have my favorite which i'll send to you in a second well here's mine bmw 650 scarver what a horrible <laughs> looking bike no that it looks like it's been designed by someone who's just given up hope on life yeah a little bit they're just oh i'll do <laughs> get out of my office uh, yeah, that's ugly. Oh, mate, from the what side, even worse. That is pretty bad. Yeah, okay. Horrible. <laughs> yeah, I, again, the uh, the R1300 is looking better to me. Let me send you my least favourite. That, And I will caveat this by saying I was genuinely contemplating buying one of these at some point. So here we go. What on earth is that, mate? Oh, that's a Moto... <laughs> is that a Moto Marini? That is a Moto Marini Grand Paso. Uh, it's got the same 1200 engine uh, that is featuring a lot of their bikes, which makes or means that it will be a fun bike. Yeah, big V-twin. Um, a really fun bike to ride because that engine is brilliant. It is quite unique as well, actually. Um, but can you get over the fact that... Just look at the face on that thing. I'll send you a few more clips. You know what? This makes me think. A lot of people don't like the idea of stacked LED projectors. But you've got to have two um, projectors, haven't you? Because one is kind of full beam and one is regular. Mm -hmm. And this, I think, is proof that actually it's better to stack those two projectors than it is to stick them <laughs> either side of the beak. Because you that's the only alternative. I feel it? like you're it's... speaking specifically to me who does not like vertical stacks uh, on most of the bikes. Well, this the is moment. the alternative, yeah. mate. <laughs> 
<laughs> Take a look at the alternative. Do you still think it's better? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I, I see your point on it. I don't know. It's the fact that they've separated it so much with that big beak on the front of it. It's got such yeah. a fat nose. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's not a looker, though, is it? It is a face only a mother could love. I agree that I'd, I'd be interested <laughs> to ride that. I do think on paper it sounds fun, but I will yes. say that is definitely worse than the um, R1300 GS Adventure. Anyway, so moving on. Thank you very much for that <laughs> quiz, Tim. What I thought I'd do also is rattle through some of the comments on the main channel video to give a little bit of a flavour of how the uh, general motorcycling, motorcycling public has received the new 1300 GS Adventure. So it's a real journey, mate. Honestly, there's all sorts <laughs> in here. Ritter13 says, ah, the off-road photo to copy her, which I think is probably fair. Yeah. And also Peter Ferguson 7679 says it looks like a toaster and I have a 1250 and a V4 Multistrada, so why would I want to buy the toaster? Arguably accurate, I would say, both mm -hmm. of those. It is a little bit blocky. DRS Nervoso says though, after the reveal last Friday, I bought one of the last new 1250 GS Adventures um, I guess because he just takes how it looks. So it could be enough to put some people off buying it. Mm. User all6rd7pl5t said, it's been a long wait, but at least now I've seen it, I can cross it off my wish list. <laughs> but Tim, I think yeah. you alluded to the idea that sometimes these designs mature well and settle in and then they don't look so bad. Mm. And we've got quite a few comments Along that theme, so Lacey under all 68 said, I hated it at first. Now I love it. It looks incredible in the flesh. And Aisa says, being honest, on first viewing, I had to keep from losing my lunch. A few <laughs> days later, yeah, it's not that bad, which I think is kind of how I'm feeling. It's, it's definitely aging better. Yeah. Um, but there's even comments like this, Tim. Nighthawk the Flying Spur, brilliant username says uh best looking adventure bike and there were actually quite a few that said they thought it looked phenomenal and and they love it and it's kind of original and also looks very um i guess the antidote to the r1300 gs which people mm. thought looked a bit small and soft this mm -hmm. looks big and blocky and rugged and aggressive and so people are into that uh mate it's a very mixed bag yeah but one really thing is. i do like about this bike is this new piece of tech that they announced, which I talked about in the intro. So uh, I know that the 1300GS already had front and rear facing radars. I don't know if you've had a chance to try a bike with active cruise yet, have you, mate? No, I haven't actually. Uh, I haven't even been in a car with it, to be honest. So no. Uh, well, it's something we'll definitely try and hook up at some point because I mm. think it's a brilliant tool if the motorway is busy yeah. and the traffic is yo-yoing a bit. It's just another thing that, that can help, you know, ease the mental burden of riding mm. but also yeah the rear uh, radar gives you blind spot warnings and that's something that's present on quite a few bikes so mm. tiger 1200 that we talked about earlier uh, some of the multistradas can be specced up with it uh, this bike, yeah, gets the rear radar, but one of the new features announced for the R1300 GS Adventure, and this will also be available on the new GS as well, the 1300 GS standard bike from 2025, is called RECW, or Rear End Collision Warning. Mm. We've talked about rear end collisions on the pod a few times, haven't we? Yeah, once or twice it's come up, yeah. Yeah, well, the new rear end collision warning system signals an impending rear end collision to following traffic by flashing the hazard warning lights with a higher frequency. So yeah, I think what I love about this, mate, is when I've seen indications of what a rear end collision warning would be for a motorcycle, hmm. and not that I don't think it exists on any bike, but I've seen kind of like uh, maybe prototypes or design ideas. And there's, there's third party stuff like, um, third eye from Inov, which is like a radar that can fit any bike that does blind spot warnings. I've tried some camera systems as well. Mm. You know, it's almost like the onus is on the rider, you know, yeah. like, Oh, someone's going to smash into the back of you and we can maybe present a, a warning on, on the dash or in your mm -hmm. mirrors or something like that. Um, it, so that you know to expect that but it's like as the rider what can you realistically do if yeah. someone's flying up behind you well yeah i just i that kind of i don't know whether that's better or worse to kind of know it's it's coming um probably better but yeah imagine it flashes yeah. at you i don't know what do you do to that just fucking throttle on and, and fly off into a junction i mean yeah. i assume you've stopped yeah. because you're at yeah. a roundabout or a junction like i, I don't know if anyone's ever properly got one to market because i think that 
that's why people were perhaps struggling with the concept of it. You know, it's yeah. an obvious um, safety issue for bikers that you're going to yes. get shunted occasionally at junctions and stuff. It's happened to so many people over the years. Surely it's like a very common motorcycle accident. Yeah. And it feels like there's very little you can do about it. And so why not take the you know the like i say the onus away from the from the rider who mm. really can't do much about it and put it onto the driver to kind of pay attention and make sure that they you. realize the bike is there i think this is a brilliant feature yeah it's so it's for sort of carelessness then is it is for people if they were sort of edging up or not edging up to you but say if someone's distracted they're not paying attention then the bike realizes they're coming up a bit too fast flashes to let them know to brake a bit harder or what i guess i think those accidents possibly happen because People just don't see a car. And yeah. okay. I don't know if you've ever had that. You know, I think it can happen. Yeah. Well, you, you look and you don't see a car. You don't, especially at night, you don't see two headlights as yeah. well. It makes it slightly more difficult to pick out the bike. And I think, realistically, this is probably going to give the driver enough time if those signals start flashing to sure. do an emergency stop yeah, and yeah. not ram into somebody. And it's interesting, right? Like, you know, some of the features... Um, on bikes with radars like active cruise control and stuff like that where you're kind of handing a bit of control over to the bike it seems mm. like people are n not sold on that some people like the new tech others are like why would I even want that on my bike it yeah. detracts from the joy of riding the bike as well I always want to be in control mm. but there are certain things like blind spot warnings and these rear collision warnings where that's how you your control anyway that's very much down to how you know the traffic is behaving and so for me i think this is going to be something that is more universally liked by mm -hmm. bikers and it's yeah. something that like i wish you saw more and more bikes and especially yeah. if someone can develop a, a third party you know uh system that you could fit like this to your own bike mm. and splice into the indicator somehow i think that'd be a a great thing that I'd be super well, interested in. Like you say, it doesn't detract from the riding experience, right? So I don't see how you could dislike it, um, unless maybe no. it's a bit too sensitive or kind of gets in the way, but it's passive, isn't it? It's not affecting how you ride the bike. It just might add a little bit extra safety, which is always a good thing. Smart new tech, mate. I like it. Simple, but effective. A good use of the radar. And so shout out to BMW for that. And I'll look forward to trying out a 1300 GS Adventure at some point. Definitely. Next up, we've got some updates for the Honda Grom as well. I just wanted to rattle through this. Have you, I've never ridden a Grom. I've ridden some of the other smaller... You know, I'm a big fan, aren't I, of the Honda mini bikes. I've talked yeah, about yeah. this before. Yeah. I love them. But I don't know if I... Um, <laughs> Yeah, Grom's never actually graced this studio for me to actually be able to ride one. That I don't think you've me. had the chance, have you? I've not ridden one, no. Well, sorry, I have up and down. A, it was Basically, it was at the bike shed, I think, after one of their shows that I'd worked. But no, I'd like to properly take it out and actually have a ride. Yeah, they do look like fun. Yeah, it'd be great. I, you see people who are into the sort of Grom scene, like doing little group rides and stuff, and I think that is what would be really fun about it. If yeah. you could get two or three people out and you sort of just razzing along yeah absolutely rinsing its neck uh, that'll be a great day out anyway for 2024 i guess they're saying it's 24 model year mm. we're in that kind of uh, gray area now mate where people are saying 24 25 yeah model year but um it's got a new sporting look with a sharper tank shape restyled side panels and a new undercow which is their name for belly pan i guess definitely looks good with the belly pan uh, three bold new colours to complement the updated look and some Honda genuine accessories available for the first time. So it now comes in candy blue, pearl white and matte black metallic. I think I'll probably go white on this one. Yeah. Is my pick. What about yeah. you? No, I'd probably go white as well. Yeah, the matte is... I don't like satin finishes and matte finishes. They're harder to keep clean and it will look dirty real quick. So that white one's the nicest for me. But then even with the accessories, it's nice they've got their own Honda accessories, but Grom is one of those bikes that's well catered for as far as extra little mods go. Well, that's probably why they feel like they're missing out on some yeah. potential money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the, the accessories are quite interesting as well. I mean, one is a visor for the... Um, for the dash, which is probably a concession that it's not very easy to read in the sun. <laughs> um, the other one is knuckle guards. So if you want to go adventure riding and off-roading, nice. at least now they've got some knuckle guards in the, in the catalog. Yeah. And they're also offering now, get this, a rear rack, saddlebags, and a rear seat bag. So if you want to go touring, 
I think it's now the perfect bike, probably. Would you agree? Yeah, this is the Grom Adventure. This is their answer to BMW. This is, you know, the 30... <laughs> hold my beer. Let me show you how to do it. The 1300 GS Adventure. Now, you joke about that, but this <laughs> engine in the Grom is ridiculously efficient oh okay. you've come on honestly mate i mean number one it matches it for blockiness of fuel tank <laughs> yeah. number two you can luggage it up and put knuckle guards yeah but number three does the grom have a fuel range that can potentially surely not surely not i'm gonna have to look that up before we move on to the next section so it's got a tank that is six liters nah it's not gonna do it is it <laughs> i'd be impressed if it did Okay, they say 1.76. Nah, 340 kilometers. So it's probably just over half that of a 1300 GSA. So in, in the name of like very, um, you know, useful consumer advice, mm. we'd fully recommend spending the full 18,000 pounds on a GS adventure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you I do want to message. go around the world. <laughs> With that, let's move on to comment of the week. Mate, I've just got a little selection here because the last episode we recorded at ABR. In fact, it'll probably be the one before last. Um, yeah. But there's some, honestly, my hat caused a bit of a fuss and mm -hmm. actually so, so did yours. So um, mm. we've got to say we were camping at the festival. So I went into full camping mode. Uh, but here's some of the, the comments around that theme. So Fun With AJ said, Rob rocking the gone fishing hat, while Tim is rocking the two years since last upload rarefied road hat. <laughs> <laughs> he does oh, say all left to both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was, that was a good job, that, that hurt. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, mate. <laughs> no, uh, Cocky right. Potato, which I think is a great username, isn't it? Cocky Potato, possibly yeah. even rivals um, Nighthawk the Flying Spur from earlier. Uh, Cocky Potato says, dude, your hat is killing me, rock on. Killing me in a good way or a bad way, do you think? No, no I think you loved it. Aussie yeah. G 82 says, dig in the hat, mate. So there's a little bit of uh, complimentary stuff there. Anyway, <laughs> Urban Outfitters, if anyone fancies picking up a <laughs> motorbob hat. Yeah. Uh, or can people buy rarefied road hats? Probably, they're technically, yes. Yeah, so I think they're still probably online somewhere. But yeah, I've just got them knocking around. I just picked it up because it went with my colour scheme better. What can I say? Thank you, everybody, for your compliments there. Bike of the week, moving swiftly on, Tim. Look at this beauty. I occasionally check out some of the customs on Bike Exif and Pipe Burn. Mm. And I saw this one, mate, and I just had to pull it in for our Bike of the Week. It's by Tamarit Motorcycles, who makes some of the best-looking customs. I think they're based in Spain. And this one's built on a Thruxton, mm. which has to be said is quite the transformation. I'll talk you through some of the tweaks and changes and then sure. get your thoughts on it. They completely chopped off the rear end on this bike, converted it to a mono shock. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess that's a custom swing arm as well in order to hook it up there. And then also got rid of the subframe and fitted it with a floating saddle. It's a little bit Triumph Bobber, isn't it, actually? Especially with was, that spoke yeah, front wheel. Yeah, I was wheel. literally typing in Triumph Bobber as we spoke. Yeah, it, it does look that way to me but nicer bit of a disc wheel at the back as well and then also it's got its own custom tank paint job of course with the tamara logo mm. uh, a bit of a cafe racer fairing which suits it quite nicely along with those very low looking clip-on bars i don't expect this is going to be particularly comfortable to mm -hmm. ride it reminds me actually of the tfc version of the triumph bobber which had the bobber seat and pegs i think but then some clip-on bars looks outrageously uncomfortable uh you've got done away with all the air box so straight into the carbs there and it's got its own beautiful exhaust system look at the way mate that that curves around the engine covers there and up and under i don't even know where it comes out but that is mm. fantastic some beautiful work there uh a bit of gold finish on some of the hardware and i think it's pretty much the front bit of the frame maybe even that's had a few tweaks but the engine and the tank maybe that's original possibly yeah. the fork but the rest of it looks brand new and i think that is a phenomenal build what do you reckon mate yeah that's one of my favorite this year i'm gonna say i mean everything of it the sort of the continuity of the color scheme i really like those little gold touches or brass even it's not quite gold but it's such a nice look to it 
And it did, yeah. Initially, Triumph Bobber was the first thing that came to mind, but a little bit, maybe a little bit more comfortable in terms of position because it's a bit taller, but then I guess counter that with the fact that you're leaning over the tank. So <laughs> highly impractical, but yeah, they've smashed it with this one. Yeah, it's definitely not about a comfy commuter ride, is it? Uh, as always, I'd love to know from people in the comments of the YouTube version of this video what they think of it. Also, we love seeing these kind of really outrageous custom bikes as Bike of the Week. So if anyone's got any suggest suggestions, rather leave them in the comments below i think that pretty much rounds us off for today though tim mm -hmm. a massive thanks to everybody for listening like i say leave your comments and we'll pull out some of them for comment of the week next week as well and we'll see you then bye bye